in the morning before school, my mom would take us to Kayona. We'd all, all in the showers over there and go to school. I was clean. My mom's friends had some kids. They came over to our house, to our tent. The next day, they told everybody at school and they teased me, you know. It's painful. It hurts. And I can empathize with those kids on Maui being teased for something beyond their own control. I wonder if somebody back in the day was like, great attitude. Great attitude. <laughs> they hamper my vision. Falling down and cutting incisions in my mind. While we sail away on time. Did you hear what? about the two mummified aliens that the <laughs> no. Mexican government displayed? Delina Maikako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by being noka oi like a lily koi. <laughs> I'm your host, Kamaka, and we have a very special episode for you today. We welcome back a friend of the podcast, Paula Funga here to the studios and usually when we have a repeat guest which has only happened I think once or twice maybe uh, we we switch up the format a little bit so this is a straight up talk story we're just gonna talk your ears off just gonna catch <laughs> up she was last year for episode 15 of the Hawaii verse podcast when we were still Hawaii verse podcast and now this is episode 90 something of keep it aloha so it's been a while happy to have her here today this would be similar to what we did with Mark Healy on episode 59 when we were just talking stories. We went on Instagram Live. So we're going to have an Instagram Live segment later on. If you're listening to this, hopefully you were able to join. Uh, but let's get right into it. Support for this podcast comes from Texco in Hawaii, which features 58 convenient locations across the state. Fueling up at Texaco is fast and easy when you use the Texaco mobile app to pay at the pump. The Texaco mobile app is a contactless way to pay for fuel so you can get in and out of the gas station quickly. Fuel your car and fuel yourself. Pick up your favorite local snacks and ice cold drinks at your neighborhood Texaco today. Texaco at Tecron, driving performance. Let's introduce Paula P. Funk Love Funga. How are you doing? <laughs> Aloha. I'm good and so glad to be a repeat guest here on yes. the Aloha. Keep it Aloha podcast. Keep it Aloha podcast. Yeah. It's very rare. Only the Pupukea Hamas get to make it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark. right. Yeah. Mark uh, lives in Pupukea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Well, I can't, I can't believe that it's been almost two years since you came on you were one of the earlier guests when I had just a GoPro and I, I was so bummed because I I lost the footage of you I don't know if you noticed there was no footage there's like a few guests that I don't have footage of just because I I messed up something you know in the beginning right. I either deleted it or forgot to press record or whatever now that I have Jordan he can just do it for me awesome. but you know in the beginning you just make mistakes like that so I always wanted to redo your episode so when you reached out and saying hey let's do another one I was like perfect Perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So how how has life been in the last two years? Well, you know, I've um, experienced exponential growth. Yeah. A lot of new things. Yeah. Huh? In the last two years. So that's really cool. Um, some highlights from last year. I, I um, was voted female vocalist of the year Woo! with the Nahoku Hano Hano Yeah, Awards. I forgot to mention that. That was Multiple really Multiple Nahoku cool. Hano Hano Award winning artist. Oh, Paula yeah. Funga. <laughs> My bad. Um, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's just something that I looked forward to as a female vocalist in Hawaii. You know, one day being able to carry that title. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm grateful and honored for it. And Was that from your last album? Yes, like Rain my, on my album Rain on Sunday. Rain on Sunday, mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. And then um, I have a new baby friend, Connie's sister. Oh, yeah, Peely. <laughs> she got big eyes. She just stares at you. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, you met her. Yeah, you're in Hilo. Uh -huh. How are they? I haven't seen them in a while. I just saw them a couple weeks ago. Um, so, so, so cute. Connie has such a big personality and she talks a lot now. So. Oh, my gosh. It's 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 really like a baby friend. <laughs> I know. I gotta I gotta go see her sometime. Yeah. Every every time she sees you on something or she hears your song, she goes, Pala. Pala. So sweet. <laughs> Better send her some special messages. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. And Peely's she's just a top like 
I guess Peely is actually a baby. She's she was born the day after me, you know. Oh. Lei Le was trying to hold it in <laughs> so long because they didn't want her to have the same birthday as me. Yeah. So I swear an hour, I think at 1 a.m. Uh, so my birthday is March 27th. Uh-huh. And she, Peely was born March 28th at I think maybe 1 o'clock. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I kept Good joking. For I kept joking <laughs> with them. If Peely is born on my birthday, because she was yeah. due in April, but she, she went into labor and they did a home birth. I said, if Peely's born on my birthday, you guys have to give her Kamaka as a name. <laughs> and she was waiting. She's like, oh yeah, I'm a... One hour we'll after March that. 27, <laughs> she gave birth. So March 28. Wow, that's Peely. so cool. I didn't know that story, that <laughs> yeah. part of the story. I don't know if they were joking about it or, you know, this, that's just how it was. But <laughs> I believe she was holding it in. <laughs> Classic. I yeah. love it. <laughs> but you, you mentioned on the podcast last time, if anybody wants to go back and listen, you know, she, Paula has an amazing story, you know, born in at a trailer park in Louisiana. Yeah. Came here, you know, had a, a not, not the most typical childhood that a lot of people have. Uh, you know, you your career in music got started. You tried out for American Idol. I'm just giving a little recap here. Just got rejected from American Idol. And then from that point, just went on to become one of the biggest musicians here in Hawaii. So it's such an incredible journey. And along with the, the music successes, like Female Vocalist of the Year, you also starred in a play. Yes. And now you just filmed, uh, uh, finished wrapping up filming for one of your documentary, uh, what is it called? It's actually a short film. A short film. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now you're just going into these new avenues. You're so diverse, multifaceted. Just impressed. Yeah, I love it. You know, yeah. the, I mean, when you have so many different inspirations or influences, I, f I feel like, um, especially as an artist and doing different creative arts, it just sort of flows into each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel like the music and writing songs helped me become, uh, you know, first it helped open doors for me so that when I had the opportunity to um, put my movie down on paper to write it out and then start you know looking for a team to to be a part of it that already um kind of gave people like people kind of knew who I who I am people know who I am you know from from the music part so they're willing to um try something else with me mm -hmm. knowing me from from that part of my my career you know yeah and so it's it's really cool I, I swear music is the gift that keeps on giving and it helped me become a good storyteller you know and at the at the bottom at the at the base of it all the foundation of it all is it really is storytelling mm -hmm. you know and now I'm going into filmmaking becoming a filmmaker it just sort of you know, helps me tell stories in a different way mm -hmm. that might be able to reach a broader audience even. And, you know, to be honest, I was into cameras my whole life. Video, camera, the, the, I wish I could find this video ca um, tape, but um, when I was a kid, like 12 years old or something, you know, People would come by my grandpa's house in Waimanalo and sell him things like cameras, you know, like bikes mm -hmm. or anything. And my grandpa would just buy it, you know. And so he had this video camera with a VHS, you know, those big ones. And I took it around and like made made videos, like music videos mm -hmm. with my cousins and stuff like that. I just been naturally interested in it. And then also photography. So being interested in photography, songwriting, storytelling, and making music, I mean, it's a natural progression into being able to make a film, you know? Seems like even beneath storytelling, you said like that's almost the base, the kind of common theme of everything. Beneath that is just the you're just a creative. Yeah. You just like to create. I do. I like to. I have so many ideas and the fun thing is actually pursuing 
those ideas and making them come true. It's mm-hmm. like such a fun thing. I love the process. I love each step. I love learning about everything. I have a, I have an amazing um, team um, for my filmmaking team, you know, um, mm-hmm. Gerard Elmore with NMG, Nella Media Group. We oh, actually yeah. worked on a thing with Subaru. Mm-hmm. And so at the end of that, uh, the last day of filming our our series for Subaru, it was the day of the Hawaii International Film Festival premiere. And so they invited me. They're like, oh, we have a premiere thing to go to tonight. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I went. They told me film. It was going to be at um, Ward Theaters. And I went home and I was in makeup all day. And so I went home. I took a shower real quick. I put on like comfy pajama kind of clothes. Mm-hmm. And then I went to um, the premiere. Popcorn, hot dog, so icy. I you love know? movie popcorn. And then I just like reclined and watched all these films. I like kind of nodded off, <laughs> up, you know, under my little jacket. And then the lights come on and... um. I look around, everybody's like dressed to the nines. They got like tuxedos, my lele, everywhere. I'm looking around, I'm like, what the heck? Somebody starts ollieing. I realize it was like a fancy thing that I was at, like a, you know, and here I am in my pajamas with my hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's kind of the vibe of the movie theaters, especially with the recliner chairs now. Mm-hmm. It's so, you could, you could be so interested in a movie, even if it's a later movie, you get so comfortable and just nod off. Oh yeah. Best I, naps. Yeah. <laughs> But I didn't know it was like a thing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I was like, oh, I won't hey. even do one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but it was there that I became inspired. I, I, I was inspired by all the different Native Hawaiian filmmakers. And I was like, wow. I had already begun, you know, the process of getting things on computer screen, not mm-hmm. paper. But, um, yeah, when I, when I, um saw that I was like wow this is so cool Mm -hmm. maybe I should tell a small part of my bigger movie to plant the seed to start getting the movie the story of the movie out there you know and then also learn how to begin even making a film what it takes you know like all the pieces that you need to come together in order to make something like that happen Mm -hmm. and and so I approached Gerard and he helped put this amazing team together. Mitchell Merrick um, is our director. Our assistant director is Chris Kahunahana. And then, you know, um, he, yeah. he did the film Waikiki. Yep. Is what it was? He okay. did. I yeah. heard of that name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can you. And Mitch Merrick did Kahoi. I don't know if you got okay. to see that yet. I've heard of it. I'm not sure if I've mm-hmm. seen it. But can you give us a little snippet of what it this short film is going to be about? What, what, what can you tell us without spoiling it? Oh, okay. Well, I could tell you it's about a kukini. And do you know what a kukini is? Yes, those people that run like the messengers, right? Yeah. Like they, they would run miles and miles to deliver a message to people. Or even, uh, it doesn't even have to be a message. It could just be maybe... Uh, in my th- in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, they even got a fish and they got to put like some la'i on top of it or whatever. I told you about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Or like, put some limo on top so they, yeah. they it can stay alive and get it to the oh, other village. I remember. I get good memory. That's what, that's the one thing that inspired me to make movies and to tell this particular story. Um, when I was a kid, I found out about Kukini and how they could run so fast and they would say, Oh, they could run so fast that they could get their Ali's favorite fish and then make it back. And the fish was still breathing, mm-hmm. like the heart was still beating, you know. And um, I heard that from when I was a kid. I was like, oh, cool. That's so cool, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> and then as an adult, I learned how they were able to do that. And I think I mentioned this in the in the other podcast, yeah. I know it from somewhere, so that's probably where it yeah. was. Yeah. They so what happened was they would get the limu, they get the fish, get the limu, wrap it around the fish, and then wrap it in 
la'i tea leaf so that it would like hold that moisture mm. in to keep the fish fresh. And that is how they were able to bring it back with the fish's heart still beating, you know? Mm-hmm. And just that one detail alone just set off these like, you mm-hmm. know, synapses in my brain. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Why don't, first of all, why don't, why didn't I know about this sooner? Second yeah. of all, how do I teach the kids about this so that they'll know forever? And so while I was thinking about that, I realized movies. Movies are the thing that's going to make the kids remember forever, you know? And... um that's how I started building this story over 25 years ago, building this story in my mind slowly and finally to be able to um, tell just a small part of a much larger story is, is a, is a real, it's a really good feeling, you know, feels, feels like magic. That's so cool. I, I didn't know it was a 25 year process. Mm-hmm. That That's super good to know because it shows that, instant gratification isn't always a thing, right? You just think of something, you do it, and then you have success. I feel like you've planted the seed many years ago. You watered it, watered it, watered it, and now it's finally starting to bloom. Mm-hmm. And then the fruit's about to be, you know, the the finished movie. Every single thing happens for a reason, you know? 100%. I don't know if you remember that. I don't. I don't really talk about it, but I know that this is the thing that helped move things along for me in my career. Remember that thing during the pandemic, I had to do this thing at the radio station. Mm. And then these DJs, they kind of like... Oh, everybody saw that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It kind of went viral. Mm -hmm. Now, I never told anybody about it. It was my friends that went, screen grabbed it, and then put it on social media. And, um, but, but yeah, the crazy thing is that opened a lot of doors for me, you know, like... And it's the reason why I ended up becoming um, an ambassador with Subaru because Amanda, you know, um, Amanda from Umu. Oh, yeah. Noguchi. Yeah. Noguchi. Yeah. Mark Noguchi and Amanda. Well, she, I went to school in Hilo with Mark. So I've known him for 20, for I don't know how long, over 20 something years. And when this thing happened, she reached out to me and she said, hey, do you want to go feed some kids? And I was like, yes, please. And so we planned a give back in Waimanalo where people could drive through, pick up food from all these food and not just food, but like educational resources as well. Um, Live plants, you know, I think it was around Christmas time. They were giving away Christmas trees and um, yeah, it was a beautiful thing. They are, um, she is, she works with Servco. Mm -hmm. And so Servco came to that thing and she's like, Hey, do you want to like, do you want to be an ambassador for Toyota? I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when I when I started talking to them, they're like, hey, because the car that I wanted was a Highlander, which is an SUV. I wanted the one that was like all-wheel drive. And they're like, did you know that all of our Subarus are all-wheel drive? And we're also philanthropic. We mm-hmm. like to give money to, the, to nonprofit organizations. We like to help the community. And I was like, the most perfect fit for me. And when they said that they were down to give money to nonprofit organizations that I choose, I was like, yes, mm. I'll sign with Subaru they're because all, of they're that. They're all awesome. I, yeah. I was a Subaru ambassador as well in 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah, after my race to 50K, mm-hmm. they, we did a couple projects. Cool. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. That I whole love team, them. the whole Surf Code team is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are. They really are. And it was because of that they hired NMG, Nella Media Group, and that's how I was inspired to make this short film. Wow, it's all connected. Yeah. Yeah, just these chain reactions. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just a testament of everything happens for a reason. And even if it seems bleak and dark and you're thinking, why is this happening to me? You'll eventually find out. 
Yeah. It, it, it will show itself, you know. There. What is this trying to teach? Exactly. You? What's the lesson here? Yeah, because if you look at it, oh, this is a a bad moment in my life, a, a negative moment, and you you just think that's what it is, and that's what it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to think what's a positive outcome, you don't. I think I saw something saying like you, a positive attitude that isn't like thinking everything's gonna be okay and pretending like there's no bad. It's just having the positive attitude helps you overcome those negative situations. Absolutely. That's all. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. It helps. It it prepares your mind to think, well, yeah, this sucks, but I know it's gonna be better. This sucks, but I know something good is gonna come out of this. Yeah. When something sucks for me, I'm like, how is this possible? I know it's supposed to be good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I tell myself? For for the last couple of years, I would tell myself, there's a saying that, um, why do bad things happen to good people? So I, I would always tell myself, if bad things happen to good people, at least I know I'm good people. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. And you're right about um, about the way that you think about things because perception is everything, you mm -hmm. know? And that's what, that's, that's the key to, to being happy, you know, happiness and being at peace in your heart is like, how do you perceive the world, you know, is like, it's all about your attitude. For and sure. I always say gratitude is having a great attitude. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I, I heard that growing up somewhere. Gratitude. What is it? What is it again? Gratitude. Gratitude is having a is great having a attitude. gratitude. Yeah, yeah. It's basically those the words combined. Yeah. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. like to mix words up too. So I wonder if somebody back in the day was like, "Great attitude." Gratitude. gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I know there's a couple words that I, I would I would do that too. I can't remember, but I I know you have a a very uh positive abundant mindset because I, I la last time you came on you, you were telling me about the jingles or these things these mantras or mm -hmm. things that you would send uh you sing to yourself for for the money for vip parking you know mm -hmm. ever since that i every time i go surf every time i need vip parking i say vip parking activate <laughs> and then i have then you you come on, on my, in my head <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it, it works it really works you know what I just got to say that um, that I love when those little tiny jingles or whatever songs come to my mind. And I have so many that I never knew what to do with them. But I know one day that I'm going to create a ch children's television show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to incorporate all those lessons and have all those silly songs that will never make it onto an album. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fill that whole TV show with all these concepts and songs that would be you awesome know? yeah that's one thing i'm gonna do for sure yeah well you're on the right track because you're now inside that film industry you got the the right connections that's super cool i'm really excited to to see that short film when it's when it's released do you have a, a date maybe oh gosh um i don't know we just submitted it for a very very rough cut mm -hmm. um to to Sundance okay. film. So if 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 we make it in, then I think the premiere is going to be in January, I think. That's not too long. Yeah, no. it's not okay. too long for now. I'm oh, not sure I'm yet, though, so. Okay, well, best yeah. of luck. Who knows? Yeah. I also want to talk about the Diamond Head Theater play. Yes. I wasn't able to go. I think, did Cunny and Leigh end up going? Yes, they did. They, did. Yeah. they came. I think you, had, you said you had a, a ticket for Cunny. And she could bring her mom if she wanted to, right? I think that's what it was. <laughs> yes, that's what I always do. I always get the ticket for Cunny. And then just in case she wants to bring a plus one or two or three, I give them four tickets. <laughs> yeah. Cunny is my three-year-old niece that is Paula's what, second best friend? What, baby friend. She's baby my friend. baby bestie. Baby, baby bestie, yeah. Because I know you have a list that I, I heard at yeah. your concert, right? I get one Brad, your number two best friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the guy whose birthday that, that one night on the keyboard or piano, he was your 20th best friend or something? No. Or so, the, guy, the guy on the keyboard, he was my, he's my number 14 oh, best 14. friend. 14, <laughs> that's what it was. Michael Grande. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah. But... That was my first time seeing you. So I've seen you sing before in in other uh, settings, like the Mary Monarch or whatever. But that was my first time seeing 
an entire concert just you really? with a full band. <sighs> wow. It was so good, I didn't Paula. even know. No, it was so good. I said Paula Funga with a live band, 10 out of 10 would recommend. It, it was just the the energy, uh, all, the, all the instrumentalists were so talented too. Oh, yeah. And then your voice is so soulful. And then the, at the blue note, it's just the whole thing was just amazing. Oh, thank yeah. you. Seriously. Like, I'm not just saying See, it. See, now you know why Connie likes to come out to yeah, anti shows. Yeah. <laughs> she, that girl can party, yeah. She likes to <laughs> dance too. <laughs> yeah. You know, one time she was at my show and she was just like so excited and, you know, like, you know, making noises. Like, she's a baby, okay? She's like shouting. She's like very, she emotes, yeah. you know? And so she cheers when she sees me and then, um, or when she's dancing to the other people. I think it was my Aretha Franklin tribute. And I came back out and I shouted her out. I yeah, was like, I saw hey, that I want to give it up to my uh, give it up to my baby friend. She's here right there. But somebody was complaining about her. Oh, really? Yeah. A lady that was kind of sitting near them. And so um Lay shared with me that when I shouted out Kani that she was my special guest. In the audience, the lady was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, she lady, yeah. she a, she a baby." Yeah, chill out. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so yeah, funny. So I love it. I love that um that little story of that time she that last. I think it was one of the last concerts that she came to. Yeah, 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 I think that was. But going back to the the Diamond Head Theater play, so you were casted as the fairy godmother. Yes, and you know what? I tell you this, I had wanted to be in that musical for about twenty years too. That that particular that musical, exact musical. And when I thought about it, like, oh, one day I'm gonna be, one day I would love to be the fairy godmother in Cinderella, Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella, mm -hmm. and I always thought it would be at Diamond Head Theater. And the crazy thing is I helped my friend find a house. My best friend, number one. <laughs> I helped him find a house in the Diamond Head neighborhood. And it's like two blocks away from oh, the wow. theater. And he moved in. He bought the house and moved in two years before I got to be in the musical. So it was like like I said, everything happens for a reason. Definitely. You know? Yeah. So how was that experience? Because that was something totally new for you. I mean, you're a performer, so you're used to being on stage. Mm -hmm. But this was acting, memorizing lines. Oh, yeah. Working with a bunch of other people. Uh -huh. to you know, same, same but different. Yes. It was a beautiful thing starting from scratch and learning being in a position where I was new to everything and I love it you know I'm not afraid to start from scratch that's one thing for sure about me like and I I had to work hard on that I had to rehearse thankfully um pretty much all of my scenes were with Cinderella who was played by this amazing actress her name is Christine Cluvel she's a beautiful singer and dancer and um, yeah, she, she worked with me. She came over, went over my lines with me and just kind of gave me some pointers or some tips, you know, and over the course of four or five months of the, you know, rehearsals and production, we became really close and I love her so much. I had to, I had to treat her like I would treat my own niece. Mm -hmm. So I have a 22-year-old niece, same same age as her. And I use that Pelina that I have with my niece. Um, in I use that as inspiration for my character and how I cared for Cinderella in the in the production. Like a sassy, protective auntie. <laughs> and they I should make it. a local version of Cinderella, yeah. That's what it would be. <laughs> the the auntie. Godmother or something like that. She, she's super sassy but loving. Yeah. From my Manalo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more original, so I probably would never do that. But thanks for the idea. Like hey, if, you never know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in three years you're just driving. You're gonna be thinking about this and 
huh, I could tell I you I won't. <laughs> hey, hey, you never know, okay? I could tell you right now. You can't say 100%. 99%. No, maybe. I know myself. 99.9%. I would never. Give me that point one percent <laughs> Give me that point one percent. Classic. Okay, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, I get that. Yes. Zero point zero nine percent. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take it. As long as there's a chance, that's all. Classic. So, so doing those things and then going into the filmmaking, what what would you say was the biggest challenges for you? Well, you know, I'm a. I'm a boss in all of my businesses. So when when in my band I'm the boss, you know, I'm the I'm the leader. I take good care of my people. You can ask any of my musicians, they will tell you that I take the best care of them. And um so being a part of a production where now you're not the boss anymore. Mm. You're just like you're just like you know, it's an, almost an employee. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like one of the. I'm just regular. You mm-hmm. know, no special privileges, no nothing. You know, and just um coming from that place and and um you know seeing seeing how other leaders take care of the people that are under them mm-hmm. that come under them and just just having appreciation for the type of leadership the type of leader I am that I do malama and just kind of made me feel grateful to have um the kind of team that I do in my my real career you mm-hmm. know and it just kind of like showed me showed me things like you know how to be how not to be mm-hmm. and things like that and like ways that I could improve in my own leadership of my team, you know. Awesome. That growth mindset, always learning, yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. You gotta constantly, consistently be learning. Yeah. I'm curious for that that play, was there auditions or uh did you were you offered the role or did you ask? No, I auditioned I was, just like anybody else. Because I'm I'm just thinking, imagine other people auditioning for the fairy godmother AC, Fala Funga auditioning. <laughs> I'd be t- I'd be like, hey, no, I give up. I don't think they knew who I was. <laughs> really? The other people auditioning for that role. So I feel like what it is is you go in, you audition, and then there's a there's a sheet that says what role are you auditioning for? And some people will check multiple characters, but mm. I only wanted one role. Yeah, yeah. And that was a fairy godmother's <laughs> role. And they're like, Are you willing to be anything else? I said, No. Mm. Not willing to do anything else. That's the only thing I'm interested in. And they gave me a chance. Nice. And so I'm so grateful for that. I made so many wonderful friendships while I was there. The costume costume lady, Karen, she's so sweet. It was her last production. So that was oh. pretty cool. It was special for her, you mm. know. Um, the queen. Um Anna Anna Young, who shared the same dressing room with me and Christine Clouveau, who played Cinderella. And even the dressers, the girls that help dress us every single day, like, you know, from your underwear, they put on your your microphone pack and then they help you put on your dress and everything. Then when you're done, they help take it all off of you, you know, like they put on your necklace, help you with your wig, all that stuff. And, um, you know, you get to become friends with these people, you know. And the two girls that helped us dress, Bailey, she ended up being the lead in The Bodyguard at Diamond Head Theater. And Emily... She ended up becoming the lead of Beauty and the Beast, which just wrapped maybe like a couple weeks ago. So Super it was really fun. cool to um, go to Diamond Head Theater and support them in their production. So yeah. that was really fun. Awesome. Congrats again on that. that. That's amazing. And congrats on your film. Just the, the evolution of your career is, is so interesting to me. Because some people just get comfortable. Some people just ride it out. You know, they never try anything new. And here you are with 
with something to lose, you know, because you're a public figure, you have a platform. So it's not it's not like it's easy putting yourself out there in new positions, knowing that there's a possibility of failure, you know, it's scary. <laughs> not for sake. Failure was that. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it's it's like somebody, somebody who's a professional athlete in football trying out to be a singer or something, you know. It's it's a new venture and it's scary. You know, people, there's eyes on you. There's there's people going to the Diamond Head play and seeing, oh, like that's a that's a award winning singer. Let's see how she does, you know? Waiting for me to flub or whatever. Yeah. The cool thing is, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what they think. I'm not here for them. I'm here for me so that I get something out of it. What do I get? I get a sense of belonging to an effort, a group effort and being a part of a team and we get to do something together. And at the end of the day, you know, yeah, I might, I, I've, I did screw up during the production. I forgot some lines. I like felt like I was a deer in the deadlights. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, ah, what am I going to do? And that's happened. That has happened to me. It wasn't like super perfect mm -hmm. and like, you know, you're fine tuning things to the very last show. Mm. You know, one time I was just admiring um, the whole cast coming down this one stairway. And then when I looked, I missed my place. I'm like, oh, darn it. <laughs> and I had to like run and catch up with my little fairies that lead the way for me. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun thing, you know. And I think that that's a part of the whole experience. You know, some days, some days you do good. Some days you don't. Mm -hmm. The very first, our opening night. So um, I'm getting ready and I just feel so emotional. I'm like, oh, so awesome. <laughs> Cinderella leaves and then I'm still there, like checking out my necklace or whatever in the mirror. And then somebody opens the door like, Paula, you're on. I'm like, what? Oh my God. I run to the stage and then I, I get to my place, but I'm late. I'm late. People can hear me running there. The microphone kind of came on. I was like, oh, damn it. What? <laughs> <laughs> they, hear, they heard me. And then, you know, I get to my spot. I'm like, try not to laugh, but it's like hilarious, you know. But it's those moments that you remember the most. Because I forget all the perfect, ec perfectly executed nights, you know? I don't even remember, you know? But it's those where you make a mistake that's going to add to your, your memory of it, you know? And yeah. that aloha that you feel for that whole thing. It's because of the mistakes, not because of the times you sang every note perfect or whatever. Yeah. You don't remember those. Yeah, that's funny because as an athlete growing up, I always remember the times I messed up more so than I I scored a goal or had a nice yeah. play. I'm like, oh, I had such a good game, but I missed that one pass or I let that guy get yeah. past me. Like, yeah, it's that's so true. And and we learn a lot more from our failures than we do our successes. Right. They, they stick with you a lot more. Mm -hmm. So to totally makes sense. I want to shift gears a lot before we head into our shishi break and jump on Instagram live with everybody. Oh, thank God. Yes. I <laughs> do have to have a shishi break. <laughs> yeah. We can we can take it if if no 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 okay no, no. we're good yeah yeah I'm usually good for about an hour and then I gotta go with the shaka tea <laughs> shaka goes, tea goes right through me <laughs> but uh, a lot has happened in the last two months here in Hawaii especially on our neighbor island of Maui mm -hmm. I know that you helped out with a lot of effort and we talked about it off podcast just about what's going on and we just wanted to share a little bit about you know. Our perspective and some things going on especially with social media right it, it social media to me is such a beautiful thing because you're able to share and connect and inspire people but it, it's also such a divisive platform as well and it's you know we've seen that with through politics with conspiracy theories with people just going back and forth with people and even in 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 light of this tragedy there's still people trying to fight with each other especially kanaka versus kanaka which i i hate seeing that yeah so yeah what are your thoughts about everything that that is going on who you know first of all my heart 
goes out to all of the people, to all of the families who have been impacted by this, by the fires on Maui in Kula and Lahaina, you know? And gosh, it's such a heartbreaking reality to think of the devastation and and everything that was lost, you know? It's unfortunate that we weren't provided answers in the beginning. And I feel like that is what sort of led a lot of people down this path of conspiracy theories and things like that. Because my mind, I've always been, my mind always wonders why. My mind wonders how. I've always wanted to know how things work how you know like even like just with like mechanics I I was I was a kid that was super curious I took everything apart if you give me if you give me a screwdriver I'll like stick it in (laughs) all the screws and like unscrew everything you know from VHS tapes to my own watch you know and I try to put it back together but I I always want to know why or how things are the way they are it's it's human nature to to want to know how an entire city burned to the ground you know in 45 minutes how why why this why that you know all the questions everybody wants to know and i feel like it was because we weren't provided those answers immediately that the questions still continue, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like that created a, created a lot of distrust in, in the leadership of not just Maui, but the state of Hawaii, you know? And uh, yeah, I think it's not uncommon or unnatural for us to want answers to all of these things. And I, I think that because of that, people um, have their own thoughts and opinions on things and they get very passionate about it, you know? And I see a lot of, a lot of people attacking each other on social media, you know? When I first, when this all first happened, Immediately, I started seeing people from all the islands flock to Maui. Were they helping? Not really. They were just kind of like standing in front of the rubble, filming themselves and saying, I'm on Maui, look at all this. And that made me feel sick to my stomach. Because, I mean, you know, so many people just lost their ohana. Mm -hmm. They completely lost their whole lives. They lost their businesses. Like, what are we doing? You know? Yeah, just trying to get some likes on a post. Right. Like, chill out, man. Do you have Kuleana there? Mm -hmm. How are you helping? You know, how is that helping? And I I get it. We all want to do whatever we think we're, whatever we're capable of doing. You know? I get that. And so I put out a post saying, hey, visitors. Maui is closed, you know, and, and then, and then people were posting saying, hey, Paula Fuga, you know, you shut down Maui, your she, post. She yeah. shut down the entire Wow, me? <laughs> I don't that's, know about. that's pretty cool. If I can <laughs> shut down a whole power, island. Yeah. <laughs> hey, visitors, guess what else is not open? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, come on, man. And I get it. People are afraid, you know. There's, I, I say that there's two emotions in life in, in, that exist in this world. Only two. And that is fear and love, you know. And I know that the reason why people did that is because they were afraid. They're afraid they're not going to be able to pay their bills with the income that tourism brings in. They're afraid that they're not going to feed their families, you know. They come, they have a mindset of fear, but mine is abundance. So I don't worry about those things. Yes, I don't have kids, you know what I mean? So, like, I think 
my perspective is very, very different from other people's, you know, I get it. I get that they're worried and they just want to, you know, take care of their families. And I felt really bad about that, you know, but like, still, I didn't think it was appropriate for people to go that that next week after mm-hmm. after all of that happened. And, you know, I, as soon as I'm done with my kuleana on Oahu, I flock to Maui. I flee to Maui every time. Boom, I no more kuleana for like one week. Oh, I'm going back to Maui. I love it there. I have a room there that I rent for my friend's house. And um, I have in Pa'ia, I have another friend building a house in Launiopoko with a room for me in it, you know? Like, honestly... Like, I love Maui. One day I'll end up, um, I'll end up there. You know, I I would love to live there. My favorite ali'i is from Maui. My my grandmother, my favorite grandmother, whom I'm named after, was born there. You know, I feel strongly connected. Her mother is laid to rest there. You know, and um, a lot of my team lives there. My my manager, one of my managers lives there. My, um, the people who helped me create all of my merchandise for my music career, they live there. You know, my, all my merchandise is there. You know, <laughs> if you order something from me online, it comes from, from Maui. Maui. <laughs> you know, and it's also been the most supportive island of my career. And I didn't go to Maui until I had Kuleana a reason to actually be there. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to the West side until I was invited until there was a kahel for music. So I had a gig in Hana and, you know, I reached out to the people who, to Blake, who is, um, who has been, who has been a strong leader in in the Lahaina community, his family's from there. He's he lives there, and he had a kahea for music. And I hit him up, and he welcomed me and my band. You know, and we got to go play at a I couple of hubs. And even then, I didn't tell anybody in advance because, you know, I just wanna, I wanna be as pono as possible. I'm not there for a party. I'm not a partier. I'm a cruiser. Mm-hmm. Number one. Yeah. So. You know, it it was just, it felt good to do. And there's people who have been volunteering at these hubs from day one, you know, these community-led, community-driven hubs. And um, they need a little bit of respite. They need a little bit of a break, you know. There were some people who are survivors of, of, um, you know, this catastrophe, who were there, but they weren't the ones right in front of the tent. They're the ones on the outskirts sitting, just enjoying the shade. They don't want, they don't want the spotlight. They don't want publicity, you know? And one thing that I, that I learned while I was over there is there's a lot of people like that. A lot of older people, like say our parents' age, who work so hard for their entire lives who are so proud to not have to ask for assistance, you know, who are so proud that they were able to provide for their ohana all these years without needing any type of government assistance. These people, some of them lost their home, some of them lost their cars, and now they have a hard time receiving the help that is out there for them. They have a hard time asking for rides to town to help get their pala pala in order, you know, their paperwork, their IDs, you know, things like that, that they, that they need, their vital records, you know. It's humbug for them. They don't like, they, they don't, don't like. inconvenience yeah, others, yeah. They're proud, they ha hell, mm-hmm. you know. and those are not the people going to the hubs, you know. They have a hard time accepting help that is offered. They're having a hard time. They never, they're not one of the families that created a Venmo account so that they could, you know, be supported by the general 
community. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a real thing. There's so many different perspectives, so many different um, situations going on, you know. And also there's something that really, really makes me a little bit emotional. Actually, not a little bit. It makes me a lot emotional. Um, kids, keiki, who are enrolled in new schools, some of them have been being bullied, mm. teased because they lost everything, you know? I was a kid that never had anything growing up. When kids found out I was living at the beach, you know, and where I was living, and it wasn't even at a beach park. It was like on the side of a road, like over a guardrail down in some bushes, you know. I've lived on multiple beaches throughout my life. And in this one case, we lived um, between Makapu'u and Kayona mm. on the beach side. To me, it was like the most amazing and beautiful place I ever lived because every morning boom the sunrise right there you know when I come home from school ocean I get to jump in the ocean mm -hmm. most beautiful clear pristine waters on all of Oahu is over there Kaiona you know I love that and um yeah, I never saw anything wrong with it. In the morning before school, my mom would take us to Kayona. We'd all, all in the showers over there and go to school. I was clean, you know, I was a clean kid. And um, yeah, I would get teased when my mom's friends had some kids. They came over to our house, to our tent, our camp. And yeah, the next day they told everybody at school and they teased me, you know. It's painful. It hurts, you know. And I can empathize with those kids on Maui being teased for something beyond their own control, you know. Hila hila. That's hila hila, these kids that are picking on those mm -hmm. kids, you know. And I feel like there's a lack of empathy in, in the world, not just in Hawaii, but mm -hmm. I'm a solutions person. I think to myself, how can I help? What can I personally do to help this situation? And so I'm going to be reaching out. I kind of am busy right now until October, but when I come back from my, I have a little tour coming up, but when I come back from that, I'll be reaching out to the different schools on Maui and I'm going to go and have school at assembly and talk about the Hawaiian value of malama, mm. you know? Beautiful. Because just that one word is everything that aloha is to cherish, to nurture, and to protect. And I feel like we're not doing that. As adults coming for each other on Instagram, on social media, our kids can see that. They see that. They take a stance. They take a stance either this side or that side. You know what I mean? And they formulate their opinion and they, you know, take it to school with them. And they're like, you know, it, it comes out. It comes out, you know. And I feel like that's what I want to do. I want to encourage. I want to encourage not just the kids, but all of us to malama kekahi kekahi. Take care of each other. What does that look like? You know? Yeah. So, so important. It's crazy in life. Like you don't know something's wrong or something's bad or something's weird unless other people bring it up to you, right? As yeah. a kid, you're so innocent and your perception on the world is, is not rich or poor. It's not beautiful or ugly. It's just, this is what it is. You know, like growing up, we talked about perception in the beginning. Growing up, you're living on a beach. People are teasing you about that. There's adults who choose to live on the beach, you know? Mm -hmm. People who move to Hawaii and want to wake up on the beach or people that camp or drive in one of those vans across mm -hmm. the world and grow up like that. So it's crazy how something can be looked at as, oh, wow, you don't have anything. Or somebody could be waking up on the beach, looking at the sunrise, jumping in the water and thinking, I have everything. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. So I, it really just comes comes down to the perception of things. But like you said, going back to 
you're not, you don't choose where you're born, the family you're born into, all these things. The that's all out of our control. You know, the one of the greatest lessons I've learned in life, what well, is from the people in Madagascar, mm -hmm. the Malagasy people, because it's one of the poorest countries in the world, like top ten poorest countries in the world. Live they live off less than a dollar a day. Wow. Like, I I lived over there, you know, in the in the rural countryside for two years. Two years, mm -hmm. getting water from a well, you know, g taking bucket baths and well, go my my bathroom is a hole in the ground, you know? And then I see people living in worse. I had a brick house. They, they take really good care of the, you know, the volunteers. People offer me food and whatever. I see people living in actual like huts, brick mud huts of barely have anything. You got, you talk about multi-generational households where people all living, like 10 people living in one house. You got, you know, Kids, three kids sleeping on one bed with the with the parents. They they don't got stoves. They got to make their own fires and whatever. They don't have a lot, you know. I for one of the first weeks I got there, I remember seeing a soccer ball made of just trash, like sticks and rope and plastics and whatever. Uh -huh. And I thought it, it was so cool. I'm like, whoa, that's so um, resourceful innovative. of them. Yeah, innovative yeah. of yeah, them. Resourceful. I thought that that's so cool. But they don't know. That they're poor. They don't know that the way they're living isn't as quote unquote good mm -hmm. as other people. Because that's well, all they know. That, that's all they know. And it goes to that quote that we've mentioned before. Comparison is the thief of joy. It is. So if you're if you're not comparing that to a real $90 soccer ball, if you're not comparing your house to a huge mansion in Beverly Hills, then you're you're not gonna be sad. You're gonna be you're gonna be like, this is my life and I love it. And the the most beautiful thing about the Malagasy people and the community I lived in is they didn't have a lot, but they always gave. They didn't have much to to offer or they didn't have the biggest house, the best meals, but they they always invited you in. They never they never did the thing that we do here. Oh, sorry for the mess. Sorry my house isn't as good. They mm. never say that. They just Random people, I'll be walking on the street just going to class or whatever. They'll be like, Odio. <laughs> or like, um, they, they'll say, Mandrusu, Mandrusu, which is like, come in, come in. They say that. And they say that to anybody just walking by, strangers and all. So w once in a while, you, you go in and they'll, be, they'll just give you food. They'll talk stories. You're talking stories with strangers, people you've never even met. That's so And they're cool. so nice. And they got smiles on their faces. And these people get paid. Less than a dollar a day, <laughs> you know? It's just, it's the perspective. It's so crazy when you you actually see that in person. You live that. You don't mm -hmm. just see it on TV, on, in, on Instagram. You, you live that life. Your perspective is totally different. Yeah. For sure. So again, just going back to the perception of things. Once, once you, you, I guess, once you see a different type of, life you you start to have that grass is always greener mentality and then i think that it ruins it ruins a lot of things for you the grass is green where you water it <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly that's that's the point where we we have to get back to i feel like life life is weird we we we're, we're babies we're so innocent we're just our true authentic self and then we grow up we have all these influences we see all these things that we want but we don't need our perception of happiness changes our perception of what makes a good life changes we see okay you got to go to college you got to get a degree you got to work a nine to five job you think that's success that's happiness and then you you get to a point where you're a little older and you realize okay no i don't that's not what life is about you know you you, you almost have to go back to your child self right and think what does the child kamaka love you know i love teenage mutant ninja turtles i love nunchucks i love playing video games like those are the things that made me happy as a kid why can't they be the same things that make me happy as an adult but and and it's that fear of not being able to fit in and conform to society that stops us mm -hmm. that makes us go away from our true authentic self which when we i say authentic self we talk about authenticity all the time and maybe that's just being your your 
your child, your inner child. Your inner child. That, that's what authenticity is. Because as a child, we didn't care until people made us care and made us feel self-conscious mm-hmm. about things, right? You're right. So, I mean, that's that just goes back to all, all, all that we're saying. And I'm just formulating all this as I'm speaking, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's a crazy world. But the what, what's going on on Maui with, you know, I didn't know people were being bullied until you told me on the phone the other day. That's that's so sad. And then people take these tragedies and, you know, they kind of capitalize capitalize on it. I and see it. It happens. I mean, there's a thing called po- poverty porn, which is what the Peace Corps taught us about not to do because that's like, you know, seeing this these kids with hanabaras running down their nose and, you know, posting a picture of them and kind of showing that off to the world saying like, oh, look at the people, how they live. And like, or almost like that white savior mentality, like, look at all the great things I'm doing for these people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to show those things. Yeah. (laughs) Just if you you want to help out, help, help. (laughs) you know, you know, yeah. And, and I I I think people want to be involved, which is cool. And the great thing about everything going on in Maui is that, there's been a lot of support, especially from this, the community, the government dropped the ball on that. Mm-hmm. And I, I wish, I wish the leaders in the government were transparent or brave enough just to say, we messed up. Absolutely. We were wrong. That's all we want from these politicians. We just want them to admit their fault. The best leaders do that. Absolutely. If you're a good leader, whatever happens on your watch is your responsibility. You, me, as a leader of my own team, if any one of my people doesn't get some, their kuleana done, it falls on me to make sure that that kuleana is done. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it goes. As a leader, you take ownership for any faults or mistakes that happen on your watch when you were in charge. You know what I mean? And I feel like, you know. They just want to save face. That's, that's They just want to save face. That's why people Especially if you come from, particularly if you come from a law background, you know. They're very specific on the wording that you use through every part of, of your... Um, Anything that happens. So, for instance, if you get into a car accident and you say, I'm so sorry. You know, you bang somebody and you say, oh, I'm so sorry. You're admitting, admitting. your guilt. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so in, in, in the court of law, I get that your verbiage is very, very um, carefully considered. And whatever you say can and will be <laughs> held against you in the court of law. They say this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, We know this. And so I feel like maybe that's a reason that, you know, some of our leaders who do come from a uh, a career of law, I get that they would want to be cautious of the words that they use. But when you are a leader of a, of a community and something devastating happens, the first thing that should be said or addressed is, you know, in, in a in a in a devastating situation like that, what the people want is comfort and reassurance. You know, they want to know that they want to know what happened. You know, and they want to know who to blame. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. It might not have been you that did the thing that whatever that started the the disaster, but you can say sorry. Yeah. You can say, my heart goes out to the people of Maui, the first thing out of your mouth. Yeah. Not three weeks later after your wife gives one speech about it. You mm. know what I mean? Like, that's the first thing yeah. that you say. And I feel like, you know. You got to step back and look because everybody is different. Not everybody thinks like you, you know. There's people who are so passionate about their opinion, you know, but we all come from different backgrounds in life, you know. 
mm-hmm. you know, and some of that has to be considered too. Some things that need to be considered, what is important to you might not be important to the rest of the people, mm-hmm. you know, no matter how pono your intentions, no matter how good it is that the things that you are doing, not everybody's going to care. And it just goes to show that everybody is different. We are all here on this earth with a different purpose to serve, you know. Mine's is music. My purpose here on earth is to help people open their hearts through music, to help people heal through music, you know. Um, that's that's truly what my purpose mm-hmm. is on earth, you know. Yeah. I know that. I know it. I knew I was going to be a singer from when I was a very young child i knew i was gonna be somebody you know Mm -hmm. i knew that one day the things that i do will make a difference in the world you know by spreading love by sharing aloha by cultivating that hawaiian value of malama Mm -hmm. and in infusing that into my life and my music and the people who i'm so lucky to be able to to influence you know on a personal level and then on a much larger scale because i know one thing about music is that it lasts till time indefinite you know so i'm very aware i'm very cautious and conscience conscious Mm -hmm. (laughs) of the words that i sing about the the words that i use about the energy that i put into to my songs you know Mm. And and all the works that I do, you know, For I'm sure. very conscious, yeah. conscious <laughs> about it, you know. Yeah, those two words are too similar. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll we'll say some final words about Maui and take a a quick break because I, I I think I got maybe like five more minutes before the tank is full. <laughs> My tank is full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But any yeah, any last words maybe just for people listening to this, maybe we'll share this on social media just to people. Some advice maybe to get through these times. People who are on Maui people or just watching on social media. I know there's there's a lot of people just in the comment sections and always criticizing people, even if they're there. I that I don't like that. When people Me are too. like, oh, this person donated one million. Oh, wait, that's all you could donate. I mean, they they, they donated. And everything. it's like, what did you donate? I know. Okay. All you're doing is commenting like, yeah. oh, why this person got to do this over there? I'm like, you're just on your phone right These now. Instagram warriors, you know. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's better than Fighting what they're doing. Yeah. Come on now. So, I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. Like, for example, the open. Oprah and The Rock, Maui's People Fun, and what they're doing, maybe it's just tax evasion, whatever, or not tax evasion, but stuff like that. They have their own personal agendas, you know, mm-hmm. whether that's true or not, I don't know. Uh, you know, but everybody least, has a personal agenda. At least they're doing something. You know, like, what is your they're agenda? They're there, yeah. They showed up. Yeah. I mean, oh, Oprah, all she's doing is handing out pillows. I mean, you're not handing out pillows. Right. Um, I'm, not, I'm not defending you know, her, but… And I think in a situation like that, um, time will tell, you know, who's here for the moment, who's here for the long haul, who's here to help support because everybody says it, this is going to be a marathon, not a race. It's going to be something that needs to be paced out, you know, and, you know, I, I'm here for the long haul. I'm here to help support in you know in in significant ways. For instance, I'm lucky that I was a part of a performance on Maui in 2012 with Jack Johnson and John Cruz and Jack being the kind-hearted and loving human being that he is. He was brainstorming on how he could help and so he found a recording of our performance at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center back in 2012. And he put together maybe about 10 songs to create an EP. And this this EP is going to be released soon. 
we have a I think it's going to be released on Friday on iTunes and all digital streaming platforms but all the proceeds every everything that is earned from that album will go to helping um helping the the relief efforts on Maui so the money will actually go to the Johnson Ohana uh nonprofit organization mm-hmm. and the Johnson Ohana Foundation and from there you know i feel like a a number of different uh organizations will be um helped you know and jack's really good he's like a he's been in communication with um with the people there on the ground in maui and has a pretty good idea of um you know what nonprofits to support and how best to support those uh recovery efforts through smaller nonprofit organizations, you know, that are directly uh, assisting the the folks there. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yes. I love how everybody's doing what they can. And that, that's, that's the key is you have to do what you can within yeah. your realm of possibilities. Absolutely. Your capacity. Um, like from, I don't sing, but I am part of a merch company. So we make sure we collaborated with a bunch of artists to raise money. That's doing so shirts. Cool. So like, this shirt yeah. that people can see, go to mahaloshoes.com. We have a collaboration with Jack Soren, who's a past podcast guest. Aloha de Mele. Uh, they've sold thousands of shirts, so raised so much wow. money. Moana Jones Wong, a past, past podcast guest. Mm-hmm. We did a collab shirt with her. She's donating all her portion to Maui, Kale Mao as well. So everybody's yeah. stepping up. Do what you can with what you have, you mm-hmm. know. And... Uh, yeah, that's the most important thing, you know. Yeah. Hana kamealoa'a. Yeah, you know? exactly. All right, well, let's take a quick break and we'll come back on Instagram Live and we'll lighten the mood a little bit. Chew! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're back from a quick shishi break. Follow to our sponsor, Shaka Tea. We are actually live on Instagram right now to my right. I don't know what side of the screen this will be if you're watching this but if you're listening it doesn't matter (laughs) you're just driving and enjoying your life right now but we are live on instagram people are leaving questions they're stoked that paula is here aloha everyone i'm gonna just take some questions from instagram right now oh somebody says teen rager says tita paula aloha my uh, blala palala blala Blala. I don't know. It might be. Do you know who that is? Teen Raja? No. Okay. Maybe if you saw them. All right. Uh, this one question comes from Chachi Abara. She says, what do you think about the reopening of Maui? Well, as far as I was, as far as I understand, Maui's always been open. And just the West side has been closed and they plan on opening it up. In October, right? The uh, the West Side, they're yeah. the plan? To, okay. They're planning to open it up in October. Okay. And, you know, I've been to Maui. I... The community has a lot of people who are saying, come back. We need your support. We need tourism to, you know, so we can pay our bills. So all of that, you know. And I also know that there are some Kanaka who are like, no, come to Maui still. You know what I mean? So there's, I feel like everybody's going to do whatever they feel anyway. You know, doesn't really matter what I think or how I feel. But what does matter to me, what I do think and what I do feel is that when, if you're going to go to Maui, be respectful, be considerate. Think to yourself, how would I feel if I was the one who was a survivor, you know, um, of, of such a catastrophe? I know that there are a lot of people who want to go over and want to help in some way. I encourage that. If you're there on Maui, help. Kokua, do something, yeah. you know. When I was there, I, I had a gig and... I um I had a gig on a f- 
on a Friday or something. One, I had a gig on a Friday and Saturday I asked my band to come play at the hubs. And so we did, we went to a couple hubs. When we were done, we got in our car and we stopped at the gas station um, above Lahaina Gateway. It's like the road that goes up to the bypass. Um, there were two big SUVs full of people from Kauai in, you know, just like locals, but they were sightseeing and it made me a little bit kaumaha to see that. Yeah. You know, kaumaha to see people coming to Maui and just taking a cruise to the West side because they want to see the devastation. I get it. It's a thing that we're all curious and concerned about, but you know what I mean? I feel like it was a little bit poor taste and yeah, I am being judgy. No, in for this sure. moment, you yeah. know, you know, and technically the West side is not open for the public yet, you know, mm. so just be respectful, be mindful. You like go over there. You can go over there without being Maha'oi. You can go without being super Ni'ele, you know, if you like go help, mm -hmm. do something, Yeah, don't you know, be of service. Take pictures and post it to your Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it, it's not a place to sightsee. I mean, it, maybe one day it'll be a historic town, like just like how Hilo is a historic town after the tsunami. Mm -hmm. And but right, it's just not the time right now. You know, there's yeah. bigger things. Yeah. So and just consider, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of debris that is toxic. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I wouldn't want to be in that vicinity, and. My heart goes out to all of the people who are helping, who are cleaning, cleaning up Lahaina right now. You know, yeah. I get friends that are there every single day and I worry about them and the health issues that might stem from being in that toxic environment for too long. You know? Yeah. Scary. I mean, yeah. yeah, just use your best judgment. That's what we would say. A wine country wife says, not a question, just mahalo for all your beautiful music. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Wine Don't country people. wife? Yeah, you if know If your is? wine country <laughs> is in California, I'll be performing in Sonoma County uh, on the 24th of September. So check out my website, paulafumahawaii.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, go check them out. Awesome. And then some people are just... Uh, responding to what you said, saying they um, 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 wait until invited to their home. Thank you, Kamaka, and thank you, Paula, for sharing. Yeah, somebody said that's horrible. It's crazy when these these things happen, and then you know how I know advantage. those people wasn't helping in those two SUVs. They're driving on Jeep, no, or on convertible. That's how you know it. They're rentals. Mm -hmm. They was all in leather oh. in Lahaina. Oh, <laughs> oh, they were sweating in that. There's no way you helping in the hot Lahaina sun yeah. wearing leather. That's how I know they wasn't helping. That's funny. Hey, wine country mama said, oh, sorry, wine country wife said, oh my gosh, I'll be there. Perfect. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you'll see Paula. Awesome. Make sure you come and introduce yourself to me because I will want to know. Yeah, say who your you are. wine country wife from the Instagram <laughs> live. This is almost like a, I feel like a podcast within a podcast. I feel like this is like podception going on right now. <laughs> podception. <laughs> yeah, podception. Well, uh, are you are you ready to jam for, for us? Or are you kind of just, is that more of a placeholder right it's now? It's most, mostly a prop. Okay, okay. Just joking, right. just joking. <laughs> no, I definitely love to play a song of my choosing. Yeah, yeah. No request. Just listen. That's all. Yeah. This is actually my favorite song that I never wrote. Um, it reminds me of Uncle George Boogie Kalama. And I wanna, I wanna sing this one for um, Hui Va'akaulua. I think that's what they're called. Where, where is that located? Um, I think it's called Hui O Va'akaulua. Okay. And it's, it's, it was located in um right across from Moku Moku Ula where that that basketball court was there's a beach over there and I don't know the name of it but okay. I call it 
I, I always call it Lele, you know? Like, this is on the, the North Shore? No, Lahaina. Oh, Lahaina. Okay, I don't know Maui, so I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it was my favorite place. Timmy Gilliam used to live over there in that spot, and he would malama the va'as. And one of them is Mo'olele that we lost in the fire. But I know that this nonprofit organization is run by Amy Hanayali Gilliam. Oh, awesome. Because she that's her way to malama her brother, you know, because that's his... His kuleana, he's a captain on ho- aboard Hokulea, Timmy Tete, and we are both godparents of the same child, oh, Zane cool. Martin Cruz, who is the grandson of Liko Martin and oh, the yeah. son of John Cruz, so my, cool. our, our godson Zane. Oh, awesome. Song called Hokulea, written by Uncle George Boogie Kalama, and I think about it because, you know, when ever Hokulea set sail, the way that they get to Kealai Kahiki is, is through Lahaina, that channel that leads us. It's like the highway to Tahiti, mm. Kealai Kahiki, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, um, it's, it has to, the Hokulea has to pass Lahaina to um, make their way to Tahiti. And so this is for... This is for that reason. Raindrops, they hamper my vision, falling down and cutting incisions in my mind. While we sail away on time Blow my cutting shout jubilation Carry us down to our destination Oh wiki wiki Ake alai kahiki Billions of stars up in the sky Looking up, they all make us high oh Hokulea, star of gladness. Oh, Hokulea, star of gladness. Stand beside me and be my friend. Make me smile and laugh again, yes. Hokulea, you're the star of gladness. Your bow, your hull glides through the sea. Guide Hokulea, Lord, we ask you, please. This we pray. Akua, show us the way. Oh, Hokulea. The star of gladness. We sail away on time. Blow my cutting, shout jubilation. Carry us down to our destination. 
the nation. Oh, wiki wiki, ake ala ika hiki. Billions of stars up in the sky, looking up the omicus hai o hokule a star of gladness. Oh, hokule a. You're the star of gladness. Happy star. Happy star. Happy. I really just have the best job in the world. <laughs> I get to talk with cool people, and then if they're musicians, I get a free concert. Choo! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. People say aloha from Vancouver, Washington. Aloha from Philly. Aloha from. They just said hearts, Paula. Aww. They said love your TED talk, amazing singer. Aloha from Cali, Star Gladness. Uh, Wait right on. Aloha yeah, to all of awesome. you. Mahalo Nui, Paula. Arcus Oak Town says Mahalo Nui. Oh, that, that was beautiful. I was just thinking, it was almost a stony thought. I don't smoke or anything, but I remember talking to Mark Healy. We were talking about shrooms. And we said the first time I got to try shrooms would be uh, with Mark <laughs> live on a podcast, <laughs> like microdosing kind. Uh, but I was thinking as you were singing that, I kind of just, you know, where it was daydreaming when, when you're saying billions of stars up in the sky and just, I can't imagine just being out over there and like just microdosing or being high just right in the middle of the ocean. That would be crazy. I've, I've never been there, but in my, in, a, in an alternate universe, I, I feel like that would be the most amazing view ever. So... I know, just a right? stony thought. <laughs> just being surrounded by stars. Wow. Yeah. You know what I so where I lived in Madagascar, no light pollution, right? So oh my every gosh. night you could see the Milky Way. I'd go I go outside to brush my teeth, look up. It's just so beautiful. I miss that. Anytime I, I get that feeling, I try Have you ever I been think. back since you were there for two years? No, I came back in 2019. So it's only been four years. About four years, yeah. 2019 and then boom, the pandemic. Yeah, and then yeah. I, my life's been crazy, just going, 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 going. Yeah. So eventually, hopefully in the next year or two, I can try to get back. I've been talking with Sam Potter, who's a, you know Sam, right? Do you know he's Sam the you? one that um makes videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's friends with Kimmy. Yeah, and yeah, everybody. yeah. Everybody. Uh, so awesome. But he he was asking me about Madagascar because he's been filming and he's thinking about maybe going there. So I'm trying to convince him to go there so he can take me. That's so cool. Yeah, it, yeah. it's so amazing. I I love it. Oh my phone's oh, sorry my my uh, phone's dying so it, it went down to twenty percent. Aloha from California. Aloha my kaavaloa moku. I love, I love her give voice duet. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, my duet with Jack Johnson called oh. Give Voice. Oh, oh okay. Give Voice yeah. duet. That's it. Okay. Awesome. I don't know what this means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Super cool. Mahalo everybody for joining. If you have any questions, leave it for us. If not, we're just going to be talking stories for a little bit. I ask all my guests when they come here. What is aloha to them? Because the, the show is called Keep It Aloha. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know how in your life, how do you keep it aloha? How do I keep it aloha in mm -hmm. my own life? Well, it all comes down to that malama, mm -hmm. you know? I show my aloha by malamaing the people that I love and care for, you know? Um, there's different ways to malama. You can be thoughtful and think about things that, Maybe somebody could need, you know, whatever. Number one, I like to feed my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, your, is your Blue Note me. concert, <laughs> I can I can say that's true because you had the coolest cake 
for whoever the guy who whose birthday it was. Uh huh. Oh, I, it, it was decked out, I think, by Ocean Dreamer, right? Yeah. Oh, so cool. And then right where when I got in the back to say hi to you guys, food everywhere. Or the, oh, yeah. Like there was cake for sure. But yeah, for sure. She ain't lying. It was Paul Paul Nelson's birthday. He's um he's one of the newest members of of my band, and he plays for a lot of different people too. So yeah. I, I typically give people a hard time when they start jamming with me, you know? It's initiation. Yeah, they gotta they gotta get used to it. They gotta pay yeah, their earn dues. Their, earn their stripes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, he's awesome. I love Paul. He's um in my band, he's stepdad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because funny. my keyboard is my my piano player. He's actually a dad, but he like does a lot of dad things on tour, like He'll go to Costco's for gas to save eleven dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, w when we're at a, a gas station, too, he'll be like, he'll look. We're at a gas station using the restroom. He's looking up Costco's <laughs> so he can go over there and put cheaper gas, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, Dad. <laughs> That's what I do. I plan. I plan my Costco gas trips because it's cheaper. So much cheaper. Yeah, than everyone else. it is. Eleven whole else. dollars. So I, yeah, I, I try to go late at night or at times where there's not a lot of mm -hmm. people. That's how I keep it low. Yeah. <laughs> Get Good. the cheap Costco gas. That's how, that's how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely love to take care of my people and, um, you know, I like to feed people. I like, um. Making sure people eat. Yeah, <laughs> that's you're, important to me. You're you're so loving and giving, especially towards the the cakey. The babies, like oh yeah, uh, Cunny, like my nieces and whatever, and I'm sure other babies as well. All your friends' babies. I love babies. Yeah, where did that the come way from? to like get to me is like if you <laughs> have a baby, baby like show me your baby. I'll be like, hey, come <laughs> take a picture with me. <laughs> but you're talking to but the if baby. You're, like, looking at me and like you don't have a baby, I might le be less likely to talk to you. But like, so you hear boom. that? Bring a baby. Baby, if you talk instant. To. I want to be your friend. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hello from North Carolina. Hello from Aloha from Big Island, Hawaii. Shout out Big Island. Uh, somebody asks, Paula, do you think you'll be in SF Bay Area when Mama Hoku is here? Arrival estimate 924. Oh my God. I'm going to be there on the 24th, but in Sonoma County. So maybe I could swing by on the 25th before I have my flight to Alaska. Okay. Um. Yeah, shucks. Hopefully they arrive on the 23rd because I have nothing to do that day. <laughs> well, you heard that. <laughs> I'm going to put in a call to Nainoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> joking. <laughs> so what, what, is your, what is your typical day like? I'm just curious because I, I feel like… I don't at, at have least, a typical day. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's all, it comes in waves. Like sometimes some seasons are so busy. Oh, like yeah. you feel like you just can't catch up on… I'm at a, the point where I just I can't catch, catch up on everything. But then there's some days where I'm just like… I don't really have that much to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you got to like um, take it as it comes, you know, for yeah. straight up. Gosh, three, three months. Wow, it's crazy. June, July, August was like super, super busy, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't even have a breather. I didn't have a breather. I feel like I just took a, a breather like the la this last week, you really? know. I mean like this weekend. I didn't have any gigs at all. No kuleana this weekend. How do you how do you stay motivated and keep your energy up and not get burnt out when you're in the midst of that craziness? Well, number one, you got to always focus on the bigger picture. What are you working towards? What's the final, you know, goal or the what is your desired outcome for whatever you're doing and I feel like I feel like that's that's what motivates me you know like I love being a part of a team I'm a team player you know you put me in you give me one kuleana I'm gonna do it you know and I love being able to rely on other people who are like like that too like you set them and you forget them mm -hmm. you know and they they do their kuleana they get their stuff done and I love that you know and uh, I think when you when you have to rely on a team of people, those people also keep you accountable too, you know, because they require something of you. And yeah, I think I think it's just 
just that. You know, there are times when, like, there's times when it gets, it's, it gets hard, you know? And sometimes I like have, I break down mm-hmm. and I'm just like so sad, you know, about things. I'm an, I'm an empath too. So everything I experience is hyper, mm-hmm. uh, like, it's like, like I'm hyper ext- aware, hyper I'm hyper sensitive, aware, hyper I'm hyper sensitive. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so my highs are super high and my lows are super low. And I try to like, I try to maintain a positive outlook as much as I can. But definitely when I'm hungry, things are, things are. <laughs> oh, so you get hangry. Things, you get hangry, yeah, hangry. I'm a hangry person. <laughs> I get hangry. And so that I feel like that's the reason why I'm like always feeding my band. You know, if mm. we have a like long rehearsal, I get them a smoothie, you know, like um, if we... If we have, if I have a studio day and they're there for me, with me between for breakfast and lunch, you getting one breakfast, lunch and <laughs> snacks in between, you know? Yeah. If I have you the whole day, I'm anticipating feeding you all the three meals. You're you know? empathetic, that's why. Because you know what it's like to be hungry, so you don't want them to feel yeah, that as well. Yeah, and I feel like that's where it stems from mm-hmm. having been, um, you know, homeless on the beach eating from trash cans, you know, Mm. like that for me, food is very, very uh, sensitive thing for me. Like I have a sandwich in my bag for you. You're grateful for it. (laughs) You're grateful for the little things. I'm grateful er for everything. definitely. And you know what? I learned in life that when you're grateful and thankful for the things that you have, Mm -hmm. the universe wants to give you more of that, Mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and that's another lesson for people who, are fearful. I, you know, I kind of felt, I feel, I felt bad for the brother who went on social media and like called me out for saying that Maui was closed. Cause I know, I know what he's afraid of. Mm. He's afraid of not having enough. You know, I came from having nothing. So I know how it feels to not have enough. I know that, you know, but my mindset is abundant. I think abundant thoughts all the time. My thought is guarantee go and have food when I'm hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had to change that around because I would notice whenever I go somewhere to order food, I order an extra meal or something. And it's like, why? So I can take it with me when I go, just in case I get hungry later. Mm -hmm. And I had to like work on that. My mantra, I think it was in, uh, 2015, 2000, no wait, 2018. My mantra at the beginning of the year, because my birthday is at the end of the year. So the beginning of the year is the beginning of a new year for me in my life, not just the calendar year, you know? My birthday is December 30th. So usually around mm. that time, around, you know, the new year, I recalibrate, reset my intentions. And yeah. I think of one thing to focus on. I don't go crazy. I do something just like basic, you know, and it's a mantra. One of my mantras was there will be more food later. Just so I don't have to like overstuff myself or like buy extra food for later. Because wherever I go later on, I'm going to have food, Mm -hmm. you know, and I had to like tell myself this, you know, and train myself to believe like that, you know. Because, like, I would just either overeat all the food on my plate, you know, and just be, like, overstuffed. And, you know, Kamapua'a, his tutu told him that his downfall, his weakness is overeating. Don't overeat. Because then, you know, can move after mm. that, you know. Anyway, I always think I about that. I remember that story, yeah. And um, he would overeat. And then when something happened, he couldn't shift his, um, he couldn't shape shift. In time, he couldn't be as fast, whatever. But anyway, I think about that. <laughs> that's good. That, that That's good. some good counter to that too. It's not not just with food, you know? Yeah. But with everything. Just with like everything. Too, yeah, gluttony. And just like when you look at the first days of this disaster on Maui, you know, our community came in full force to Kokua, to Kako'o. And just like that, this person who called me out, on Instagram, 
somehow they thought of a, a way and like to get people to support his business. And now he's doing so good, you know? And it's like, okay, all you gotta do is like take a step back and think, what can we do? And I, I'm glad he went and did that because then it got people to say, oh my gosh, these smaller businesses need help. You yeah, know, let's I, help them I out. didn't even think about that until yeah. people started to. It, it's not something we automatically thought about yeah. first. You all know? I think is, I want a malama, mm -hmm. those people who are devastated. That's where my heart is. Yeah. That's where it came from. That, that um, sickening feeling watching people flock to Maui just to like photogram, yeah. you know? I'm not a photogram person. I do choke stuff for in private people. for the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I don't got to like boast about it. I don't got to post about mm -hmm. it, you know? But eh, hey, like I, I know everybody's going to do whatever they feel is right in their own hearts. I get that. Do it. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. Good. What might be good for you might not be good for me. And I get that, you know. We are all very, very different people. We, No matter, even if we have the same coco, you know. Yeah, we might be Hawaiian, all of us. But we come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And we're having all of those life experiences is what, motivates us to do whatever it is that we do you know yeah kako'o i love that yeah. and definitely kako'o the abundant mentality yeah yeah just know that when you need help guess what your community gonna help you i i believe that yeah we're gonna I, help each other there's nothing to be afraid of you know yeah. there's help i i feel like i've been like that for as long as i can remember i've i never worried about money or not not I don't grow up with money but I'm just saying like I, I guess because I don't need a lot I don't I don't really worry about stuff like that but I was always able to get money when I need get food when I need you know I, I don't because I don't think about what I'm gonna eat for lunch or dinner I just I'm kind of more in the moment kind of person mm -hmm. And I just, I always just figure it out. I feel like the abundant mindset is really just figuring it out as well. Yeah. <laughs> You're just knowing that it's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? And if you need, if you need something, guess what? It's going to, it's going to be there for you when mm -hmm. you need it. You know? Yeah. If you just trust and know that, I think, gosh, it's a beautiful way to live your life. You know? Definitely. I agree. Uh, Tanya, Tanya Masina, Masina, that's, that's hard for me to see from this far. But this person says, your empathy is what makes your music and essence so relatable. It is your superpower. Aw, thank you. Yeah. And then Lehiva underscore love. My phone's at 10%, by the way, so <laughs> I got to get off of this soon. Um, this person says, do you have a routine prior to a performance? Yes. I have to take a shower. Because I cannot sing if I'm hot. And mm. this includes washing my hair. And then I have to brush my teeth because, I don't know, I just feel like... <laughs> just in case it goes down to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like if you're going to sing, your mouth better be clean when you're delivering those words. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, your, your, yeah, your yeah. words, like, you should clean, cleanse yourself. You yeah, know? yeah. I like that. that that's cool. And uh, it's a cold shower that I take, oh, not a hot okay. shower. And then um, I need, I need a few moments of privacy to get in my zone. Mm -hmm. And then if sometimes there's no time and I cannot, I like, I run out of time and I don't get to pull it with my, my band, but I like to bring it in and I like to take a moment to give thanks for the many gifts that we are, are given so that we can share those gifts with everyone else because it's a very unique gift, you know, being able to perform music and, and sing for people. It's, it's, I don't take anything in my life lightly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all very intentional. And yeah. so we pull it for everybody's safety, especially if they're still on their way. And then we pull it for everybody's safety when they go home. And we ask mm -hmm. that whatever 
the people are coming to our show for, whether it's some healing, just an escape from their own reality, f- inspiration, whatever, whatever it is that they come there for that night, I, I pray that they receive it. Minus touching me. <laughs> Still not joking. Just stay away. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Anima, this is going to be the last one. I'm going to get off of this uh, live and finish up the podcast. Anima underscore 9000 says, Aloha, Paula. I love your hula post. Heart with the hands emoji. Oh, thanks. What mele hula is a favorite? Regular heart emoji. Um, well, I haven't. Well, my best friend, one of my best friends is the Kumuhula. And to tell you the truth, I've just only learned the basic hula motions. I never learned any songs. But if I had to pick a a song, every time it comes on, I just am filled with this beautiful feeling of love. And I wish I could see it being danced. And it's... um. You know that song, um, Kamalani Okeo Kaha? It's from Can you sing Robert it? <laughs> Casimero. I don't, I don't, you know. I would have to, I would have to hear it. Oh, it's so I beautiful. I don't know by the name. And every time I hear it, there's this like beautiful guitar part. And it's like, sounds like a little hesitant, like it goes in and Mm -hmm. it's like holds back and then it goes in and holds back again. And it's just beautiful song. I I can't. (laughs) Kamalani Okeo Kaha is a song that I would love to see somebody dance to, you know? (sighs) (laughs) Okay. I get chicken skin thinking about it. You should go listen to it. (laughs) I'm going to go check it out after. But okay, we're about to hop off, Mala, for everybody, uh, to everybody for joining this Instagram live. Mid podcast, we'll we'll definitely do it again with a uh, another guest. But my phone's about to die, so <laughs> I gotta get going. Ahoy ho. Chew. But not ahoy ho to the people listening right now. Hope the hope that wasn't too confusing. You know, over three hundred people joined that. They love you. Okay, so all right. Well, we gotta start wrapping up soon. But yeah. is there anything else you that's weighing on your heart that you wanna you wanna talk about? I think we, we went over some good stuff. <sighs> yeah. I get yeah. it's not really weighing on my heart, but it's kind of a thing that I'm like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> well, are you friends with Beyonce? Is that what happened? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so um did you hear what? about the two mummified aliens that the <laughs> no. Mexican government uh displayed? In their UFO meeting yesterday. That's it was on social media? It was on the real news. Like oh, the actual the news. world news. Yeah, it's on the world news, not just social media. Wait, they showed the these two mum- little mummies. mummified alien bodies that are estimated to be over a thousand years old. In one report, I heard that they're saying 17. 17- Hundred to eighteen hundred years old. These aliens were found in Peru. That's how that's how Machu Picchu was born. I mean, made guarantee. Guarantee is the aliens. That, that, that's how the pyramids were made. It's aliens. Yeah, guarantee. Did you see? Um, even on Mars, they found a pyramid. What? Yeah, and like I don't know. Like there's a there's a pyramid on Mars. Like there's a. I gotta look into footage these of it. Yeah, look into it. Look into it. So you 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 believe in extraterrestrial life? I do. I believe in it because it doesn't make sense for us to be the only yeah. intelligent, uh, you know, life in in the universe. And that being said, we are really dumb at the same time. Yeah, sometimes. exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then when you take a step back and you think about the scale and what size earth is complete compared to all these other mm-hmm. enormous planets in just our solar system you know yeah okay cool but how many um so we have a galaxy it's called the and- andromeda galaxy but there's multiple galaxies within the universe and each galaxy has about has like i don't even know how many planets but if 
scientists estimate that there's probably about 100 billion planets in the universe, you know? How can there be life only on one? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense. That's crazy. I feel like I'm getting a a little anxiety just thinking about all of that. Like how many other species or life forms could be out there. I mean, I don't... so. If people ask me, do you believe in aliens? I don't not believe in them because like if I see it, I'll believe it. But I do think just because the universe is so vast, yeah, there has to be something. That's why there I believe There has it. to be. It, maybe another, maybe the, like animal shaped people or whatever. Maybe us in a different universe. There has to be something. Yeah. hundred percent. I believe it. And I believe it because guess what? My intuition tells me so. And I believe my intuition is my kupuna guiding Mm me on this journey of life, you know. And I listen to them. Your intuition is your kupuna, your guardian angels, your guides communicating with you directly. That's how they communicate with you. Mm -hmm. You know, your own kupuna. That's why you always got to listen to your na'o. Yep. I'll tell you one thing about... About my movie, every single thing was, our entire production was completely blessed. On the very first day, our lead actor, just about to sit in the chair to become this character that I dreamt up 25 years ago. Actually, I never pick him. I never pick him to be in this role. My other partners picked him, was like, no ways, this is the guy. He's the one. I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) You know, I'm like, whatever. I'll let him convince me, whatever. The first day he finds on Pueo Feather, before he sit in his, his, his chair, little does he know, um, well, in, in, the, in the thing, there's one guardian looks out for him on Pueo. He never, I mean, and then I actually put the Pueo in there because that's my Omakua. Oh. So for him to find that thing confirmed for me that he was the one. That's crazy. First day. Now, many other Ho'ailona in between, but this one in particular. I My niece was staying with me for like a month in July. And it was August 6th. I, I, August 7th. I just dropped her off at the airport and came back to the set. and. I was like in an area across a stream and something said, oh, go home, go home already. Cause I was tired. My body was exhausted. And I was like, oh, okay. So I make my way across the pond. I like slip on a rock. I Spider-Man saved myself. Like I didn't fall in the water. Like I dropped my, I threw my walking stick and none of my clothes got wet. So I, I fully, <laughs> I don't know how my muscles came in to play, <laughs> but I didn't fall. You know, I was safe. I get across the pond or the river, the stream. And then I, I sit on this bench and something told me again, time, time to go get out of here. And this photographer walked across and all my actors were coming. They're warriors. And so he goes, hey, I want to take a picture of you guys. Stand right there. You like, look cool, you know. And something said, oh, go direct his, this shot. Go direct it. Make sure mm-hmm. he gets the shot you want. Because it might be the poster for our movie. We don't know. You know, you just gather all these shots you pick after. And so I took all my ukana off of that bench where the bench was. I took it off took it all and I walked maybe like 10 feet away and then I got closer I walked back towards the bench to go look at his line of view you know I was like oh no I don't like this view you gotta go over here I like this angle as soon as as soon as that happened there was a huge gust of wind and I heard that we all heard this crack and the warriors all looked above like to the side of me and was like, watch out. And then something told me, stay still, you know, don't move for you walk into the whatever. 
This branch, the size of the bench I was sitting on, broke from one tree above and fell on the exact spot I was sitting in and cracked the bench in that spot. If I never listened to my intuition, my instincts to leave, that would have been me with the crack. You know what I mean? That's wild. And it was the craziest day. It was the 7th, August 7th, the day before the fires. Everybody was kind of stunned. You know, they were like worried. And I was just grateful because I know that my kupuna is watching. I know I had two messages to leave there. And I listened. And so I felt proud of myself that I listened. And also it built the trust in me in that in that feeling in your na'au, you know. It built up that trust for me to listen to my intuition because that's your kupuna. And um, the next day I woke up, I looked up the wind and I, we we're supposed to have another filming day that day. We we're supposed to shoot in the same place. And I woke up, I told my partners, I said, you know, I, I mentioned what happened the day before. And I said, if I'm listening to my kupuna, they tell me today is not the day to film. Mm -hmm. Take a break, you know. So we canceled that day. It was the best call. And that's the day that the 8th, that's the day that the fires hit Maui, hit Lahaina. And my best friend who lives in Launiopoko above Lahaina, mm -hmm. he was actually, he flew in that day on the 8th to come film on the 9th, you know? And so I was with him when the fires were happening. All his friends, all our friends who live in Lahaina, were, they kept calling him, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was just kind of a nuts thing that day but yeah listen to your kupuna listen to your intuition because that's gonna save you it'll save you you know that is a great way to wrap this up and with that story yeah this list i mean do you need a bigger sign than that yeah. to listen to your no your oh, yeah. intuition the natural instincts it made me feel so empowered that the next day i said today is not the day that we film we canceling today, you know, That's so making crazy. the executive call to be like, no, that was a warning. Today we listen, you know, we don't film over there. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy that you listened and you're still here yeah. and that everything went well on the, on the shoot. And I'm happy that you were able to make the time and come out with us today and talk stories on this fun talk story session on the Keep It Love podcast. I know. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. No I problem. really appreciate it. It's and, always good uh, seeing you. <laughs> yeah. I've been enjoying all your other yeah. podcasts and guests and yeah. learning more about people who I've known for so many years too, you know? Yeah. And that's why I love this because even with like people of your caliber, I, I see I see you guys all the time and they, so, social media and then in real life, but you never really have a chance to talk story for two hours. It's a lot of just like hi and bye and like mm -hmm. small talks or how you doing, whatever. So I, I really enjoy these times where you, we can really get into to things like this. Yeah. So Mahalo, is there any final words you want to share before we, we wrap up? Can go eat your sandwich? <laughs> what's the what's the hangry levels right now? Oh no, I got a sandwich for you. Oh what? But I never give them to you because had him. <laughs> it's okay, we'll share it. No, it's two. It's two pieces. Of, Perfect. It's two yeah, sandwiches. Yeah. I, so I I have another. We have to record right after this, so I I don't eat too much before that. So half is perfect. Perfect. Yeah, mahalo. <laughs> But yeah, again, thank you. yeah, we're, we're, I'm gonna be following, seeing when the that movie comes out. The short film comes out, and of course, yeah, we're gonna be connected. If not, just through all, Kani. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So, uh, how do, I usually read this off my laptop, but I think I I, I remember it. Uh, mahalo, Paula, for coming on the Keep It Low podcast today. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host Kamaka, and remember to always keep it aloha.